Big Mama, or the Rhino from the Metro series, is an interesting creature simply because of the morphological differences it has compared to the other Nasalis. Standing more like a large gorilla rather than a wolf like all the other Nasalis, she has undergone quite a bit of restructuring at some point in her life, but this has also afforded her the status of Alpha. And you know, your boy is all about those keywords, so let's jump into the lore and morphology of the Big Mama Rhino Nasalis fight from Metro Last Light series but not Metro 20. 33 and explain the boss Masali's origins. Well, that was shameless. So, first and foremost, what is she? Well, she's going to be just that. The Rhino is going to be the alpha female of the pack due to her large size and raw strength. It appears that the Nasalis have a matriarchal hierarchy in their packs, more than a male-dominated one, which is interesting for a couple of reasons. Before we get to the actual breakdown of this creature, what I find kind of most interesting is it is documented in-game that the flying Nasalis are actually going to be the females. The male Nasalis are going to be your typical attackers who hunt in packs with the occasional flyer, who, as stated earlier, is going to be the female. She is going to climb on the walls and emit a sonic attack disorientating the person for several seconds. The extra skin flaps on the female seem to be a trait rooted in young age rather than permanence. Assuming that the rhino isn't some strange mutation that gave her the best chance at survival, the females seem to eventually turn into these types of creatures, albeit they're probably going to be much smaller, whereas the alpha female is going to be much larger. The smaller females upon reaching breeding age might be a lot like puberty for humans in the transition from childhood to adolescence to adulthood. Upon reaching adulthood, the flyers seem to undergo the changes that help create the armor plating of the rhino. This would make a lot of sense considering that the shoulder sports almost like shoulder pad-like protection, which could easily have been the skin from the wings thickening up and folding around the arms. But since we are entering the actual morphology of this creature, let's see how the female Nasalis progresses into the rhino that is going to be possibly the ugliest thing I've ever seen. So starting with the legs and working our way forward, let's run down the list. The legs are stuck in a constant squatting position, which is actually going to be quite expected. If you look at the younger form of the rhino, you can see that the legs are going to be much skinnier and more squat than their male counterparts. These legs are meant to aid in grabbing onto surfaces rather than standing up right to get a hunting advantage. So, their natural structure carries over into the rhino, almost making them appear like she's sitting on her own legs. The legs are actually going to look a lot like ours in terms of structure. They are going to be digitigrade, but they do almost kind of share a closer appearance to our own legs, but standing on their toes. Albeit the structure is by definition going to be digitigrade due to the fact that she does walk on her toes or really claws, but really it looks like she has perfected the slav squat to me. The feet are covered in a thick callous skin, but what is most strange about her feet is the massive singular claw protruding from what is probably going to be the middle claw that she seems to walk on. Liken it to the hoof on a horse, except really it's going to be a claw. Three other claws surround the central claw, but are going to be much smaller. The legs are covered in what appears to be a very thick leathery skin, although it's not going to be the armor plated skin we see later on her body. But again, this is unsurprising as the skin of the creature overall appears almost cancerous in growth, which due to the radiation would not surprise me. Moving up the back of the creature, the armor plating here is going to be apparent, but it's actually going to be a weak point and it's going to be thinner. There almost appears to be interlocking plates on the back and the spine can be seen in the arches, but this is more than likely growths on the back allowing the spine to remain unimpeded while still providing some extra support and protection. As stated, the armor is going to be relatively thin here, however. This is going to provide a weak point on the creature if you should need to bring it down. Where the latissimus dorsi sits is where the real plating on the back makes its connection point on either side of the back. This extra skin armor is going to run down the sides of the back but in where we could presumably assume that the rib cage ends. This brings us around to the front of the abdomen. The abdomen of the creature is going to be another soft portion of the body for a couple reasons. First, I believe like I think 5% of my viewers are actually female and if you take 77,000 people, 5% that's going to be somewhere along the lines of 3,850 people roughly. I'm sure somebody here has been pregnant so they could probably attest that when you're pregnant and you have something like you're wearing a tight pants over your stomach, it's going to be very uncomfortable as there is a child in there. So having armor plating would almost be the same thing in terms of being rather uncomfortable. So this applies to the rhino as well. You can't have that armor plating there as it could affect the unborn child 
old or in the rhino's case unborn children so being top alpha she's likely going to have the breeding rights i suppose you could say so armor plating on the stomach is not going to exist for her because she's probably going to be pregnant a lot so speaking of alpha breeding rights let's jump into how this society of nasalis is probably going to be set up based upon what we know in species already that have female alphas being top alpha female she is more than likely as stated going to have all the breeding rights in species where a female is dominant there's likely going to be other females clearly and they're not going to be the ones reproducing or if they are reproducing they must do so in secrecy as the alpha female is the one who's going to have babies to replenish the population eventually the alpha will be dethroned due to age and then the next female begins the reproduction cycle all over again this same structure can be assumed from the nasalis as well the nasalis female will presumably have litters of children suggested by the number of mammary glands located on her abdomen and chest region so as a little bit of side lore just to make you feel really bad about yourself there is no guarantee that the rhino is not actually pregnant when you enter the catacombs and you fight her you monster heading up to the shoulders the armor plating is displayed in full view surrounding the shoulder joints is a thick layer of hardened skin the overall shape is interesting to say the least as it looks like it was almost bestowed upon the creature rather than grown but my hypothesis concerning this is that the flying nasalis as it matured and grew the wings eventually wrap around and began to fuse with the chest region of the rhino upon this completion the wings harden providing extra armor and they should in theory be able to compete with other females for breeding rights these hardened wings are going to appear like shoulder pads and allow the rhino to charge at other creatures injuring them or even outright killing whatever stands in their way these shock absorbers are so powerful that they are able to knock down stone pillars with very little issue and allow the creature to continue charging the shoulder armor fuses about halfway up the arm area the arms themselves are going to be probably about as powerful as the legs she stands on as she is still quite quadrupedal the armor here is going to be somewhat thick but nowhere near as thick as on the shoulders still this is not going to be a large weak point concerning gunfire as the tissue is so condensed that standard rounds do very little damage but it is going to do more damage than if you just outright shot the shoulder the hands of the creature have molded into what is basically a stump with claws these claws are going to be pretty dull and provide more support and kind of take over a walking role just as the back claw does I base this on the fact that the arms probably weigh a couple hundred pounds and that weight would have an effect on the muscle as well as the bone the claws can be used in a swiping motion but really this is just going to impart more blunt force energy than actual bleeding damage this force would be so great that it could easily cause internal bleeding and splinter bones upon impact however for the most part these claws are going to be used to support her heavy frame it is possible that the hand itself is somewhere in there and could be visible but the tough skin has grown around it completely immobilizing it for more highly dextral uses and so it's really just turned it into a foot the neck of the creature is going to remind me personally of a turkey neck concerning coloring and extra skin but this particular neck is going to be very large and powerful almost as large and thick as the actual head which is going to bring us to the head actually because there's not too much to say about the neck the head is going to be completely nightmare fuel a large ridge sits above the eyes which it's going to appear to not have a purpose but I hypothesize that this is actually where the sonic frequencies used to be admitted from from the wing Nasalis during its younger days this leftover trait is going to push up the skin giving it the appearance of a horned protrusion which may be why she's also called the rhino besides her blunt charging the eyes glow bright yellow much like the others down in the catacombs and that's not to say that the eyes are going to be as used as the shrew's main way of hunting is going to be her large nostrils which presumably will relay information to a well-developed olfactory lobe giving her the ability to find your scent and as stated this is going to be owed to her mole or shrew ancestry and this is going to bring us to the mouth absolutely terrifying the only thing that rivals these cluster of jagged teeth is going to be the she bear I suppose there is something to be said about mother Russia because the females here are going to be quite alarming to encounter anyhow the teeth sit like daggers within the mouth with the front teeth being the largest it appears as she grows the skin is stretched and gets pulled away from the jaw area leaving the unarmored skin stretched almost to maximum capacity it's almost like she grew out of a winged Nasali's mouth pretty interesting anyhow the mouth has probably given her the kill over many of the challenging rhinos as clearly these teeth are going to be designed to pierce the armor of others the behavior of a rhino is going to be aggressive 
aggressive, but not all that intelligent. She will charge at intruders, pummeling them in the process, but the same can be said for any Nasalis located in the way or even pieces of rock. If it's in front of her, it's probably going to get hit. However, harping on the intelligence again, she is not that hard to trick into moving into certain areas, and using that big brainy homo sapien brain of yours, you can easily outwit her with the correct planning. Overall, I would put this creature somewhere in the 800 to 900 pound range, and for other portions of the planet, that is 362.87 to 408.23 kilograms. And comparing her to the average height of a Russian male, which is 5.9 inches or 175 centimeters, I would have to say that she stands at about 6 foot 6 inches or 198 centimeters. So she is going to be quite the stout female. So that wraps up Big Mama's origins and morphology. I hope you all enjoyed the morphological breakdown of the Rhino Explained. If you did, leaving a like and commenting helps the video get out there, which is always awesome. If you are new, subscribing and tagging the notification bell in theory, in theory should get you notified when I post, but I have figured out lately that might not always be the case. I will drop my Discord, Twitter, and Patreon link in the description. If you would like to check out those, then that's where you will find that information. Also, for anyone who didn't know, I do stream on YouTube, like, a lot. My videos are unlisted, but there is a playlist, so they should appear in the live stream playlist if you would like to watch them. Now I would like to thank my awesome patrons. At the scientist tier, we got Layla Elizarin, and then there's Master BC, and then we have A. Laurentis, who appears to take part in I think every stream I've done so far, or at least watched them. Glad you like them, bro. Next up, our residents are going to be Richard Muhlenberg, Alex Parks, and Miscellaneous Militaria. Our two geneticists are going to be Andrew Lawson and Divine Whisper, and holding down their masters in biology, we've got Adam Hartswick, Brian H. Briggs, Cameron Smith, Cody G. Rice, Javier D. Rodriguez, Laffy No Skill, and Scott Grant. With their bachelors in morphological sciences, we have Ahigao Comics, Average Soul, Captain Gas Mask, Dustin Ellis, Eric Scott Gillies, Natsuki Chiaki, and one tired slob. Thank you, patrons. Your support is always helpful and appreciated more than you know. So for everyone else, I hope you guys enjoyed the video over the Rhino, and I will see y'all in the next one.